Welcome to 4CGP for Crystal's Gaming Podcast. We're back again with a new party member. But first, let me hand hey. it off to my boy, Vic. Vic, go ahead and introduce our guest. What's going on, Cruz? Yes, we have a lovely guest today. I've known her for quite some time. We just confirmed it since the release of Overwatch. <laughs> this is the new up-and-coming Twitch star. Keep a lookout for her. The Baraga. She is currently on 771 followers right now so if you're not following to her go ahead and hit that button cost you nothing to do so she's great uh, yay. she just completed her voice acting demo so she's going to be trying to venture off and to do different things Can't she's wait. an overwatch main with reinhardt so if you need a good tank call her up she's good to go <laughs> tiparaga i can also do lucio <laughs> and lucio so if you need a healer tiparaga appreciate you very much for being here all right thank you thanks for having me i'm happy to talk with y'all i reached out to tiff pretty much because i, I told her i wanted to interview her because I just, her personality, her vibe, her energy, so amazing. So we had to, I had to bring her on the show. She's actually technically the first person outside of our circle that we're bringing onto the show. So again, I can't thank you enough for doing this. We have so many questions for you as far as being <laughs> a up and coming Twitch superstar. Right? Sounds good. Sounds good. Right. So Cruz, you want to start off with the traditional question for our openings? The traditional question? Yeah. You may start it off. I'm yeah. not. I'm gonna hit her with the hard question though. So. No, well, no, not the hard one. The what kind no, of I'm games? Just, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Throw me off now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But yeah, seriously, we just start off. Um, what we what have you been playing? Oh, cool. Okay, so my main game right now is Xenoblade Chronicles Two. Um, I just started that like maybe a week ago, and I'm having a lot of fun. But I'm still like on like chapter three um i'm also going through the yakuza series uh i'm on yakuza 3 right now and that one's a bit different too um it hasn't been like remastered like the other titles so far so like it's you know a little slower and a little it it hasn't aged as well and the story is a little different too but i've been enjoying that too and then on sundays when i'm streaming i on sundays i play a game from my childhood you know just once a week and right now I'm replaying Super Mario Sunshine on Sundays. Oh, so those classic. are like the three, like like my three ro- t- like my three main Rotation. rotations. But like I have like some other things that I try to do every now and then, like uh, Super Mario Maker. Um, playing like viewer levels have been, you know, that's been fun, or like Smash Bros. So, you know, stuff nice. like that. But those are like my three uh, main games. That's what's up. Yeah, Mario Sunshine, that's a classic one right there. Wait, wait yeah, which fun. version are you playing on the Switch? I'm playing on the Switch, but I actually still have, actually with it, like it's right here. Hey, I still classic. have my GameCube. Represent, um, represent. Actually, choice. But I, it's just easier. If I don't have like the ability to stream from my GameCube, although I still have that too. This is mine. <laughs> nice. I mean, I live in a tiny oh, apartment, so it's not nice. like I just Over. had this ready. I didn't have this ready. I just have a really tiny apartment, so okay, <laughs> everything is usually within reach. But here's my my GameCube. See, so when I a person takes game. care of their systems, you know they love gaming. You know, yeah, it's, I still it's still a copy of uh, Double Dash in there. It's still fun to play. Like when I have like when I have friends over and stuff. Like absolutely. Um. So yeah. So those yeah so to answer your question xenoblade chronicles <laughs> 2 yakuza 3 and um super mario sunshine Additional what are y'all playing though can i oh, ask what y'all playing? what oh yeah, yeah sure absolutely um for me uh i've been playing a lot of my ps3 only because i have a lot of ps1 Whoa. games downloaded on there so i'm playing a lot yeah. of sukoden which is an old school rpg and final fantasy tactics so yeah nice. those are my two main states right now Loving those classics, man. What about you, Cruz? Uh, really just uh, playing Tales of Arise. That recently Ooh. caught my eye. It looked so good. That looks so good. That, and we recently did a top five games podcast, and I re-entered Breath of the Wild, and it's hooking me like crazy. Oh, nice. <laughs> so nice. Those two That's the first main. thing I streamed, actually. Oh, oh okay. no. That's Breath one of the wild. questions. No. <laughs> oh, that's one of the questions. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about it later. Good. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get into that. We'll definitely get yeah, into that. Yeah, but it's such, a, it's such a good game. <laughs> right, right first question um what made you want to start twitch diff well so you know the the pandemic has affected us all you know and i guess really so i have been working from home um you know since march of last year and you know it's just me no pets no kids nothing so i was just like kind of like I don't know, like all, it's kind of like Groundhog's Day, every day started feeling like the same. And, you know, I was, you know, doing my normal stuff, you know, 
playing video games, you know, watching wrestling, you know, just random crap. But I just felt so disconnected right. from people, you know, even like, you know, I had like coworker friends, but it just, you know, you can't, you know, you really can't be yourself at work unless, you know, it, well, I guess it depends on where you work, but you know, there were certain things I just couldn't talk to my coworkers about. So I had already had like a Twitch account for a really long time, like, you know, just through my PlayStation or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes I would watch people. So like, when the pandemic hit, that's when I was really like on it, like what, like actually like watching streams because, you know, I had like friends who were doing it. And so I was like, oh, I can, you know, I haven't been able to really hang out with like my friends as much as I would like to, but they're doing this and I can like talk with them. And, you know, I didn't really think I would start streaming, but then I was just like, well, I'm, I'm not really doing anything else anyway. So I might as well like, right. what, what's like, what's the extra step of like, getting a capture card if it's if it will you know make my day a little bit you know easier or you know give me like something else to do so that was really it um like in the beginning there were like I was like an active part of like twitch like in people's chats and just like supporting but not streaming Mm -hmm. and so I would like occasionally message people who you know I you know uh gotten to know and talk to them about streaming and you know including like people that I knew in real life you know And they, you know, gave me like a lot of like good, like feedback and stuff and told me to kind of go for it. So I just, I just kind of did it. (laughs) I do want to jump in real quick. Now, what are some of those people? Cause I know like I met some of them in your stream. Right. right. So you want to give them a shout out real quick? Yeah. Shout out to Mr. Simple Things. So actually he was like the first, like outside of like, you know, the big like the big names and like the big like wrestlers like people who were like already kind of famous Mm -hmm. who were streaming this was like the first person that I knew like we had like known each other since but we met like in Borderlands 2 (laughs) so I had known (laughs) like yeah like that this was like someone I had known for like a long time um so I was like oh yeah like you know Mr. Simple Things on Twitch like he was the first person I subscribed to though like like I was like okay yeah like I'm definitely gonna like support like this is great because I was actually moving last year and so you know while I was like moving between places like I didn't have internet but I would just watch like I would just pull it up on my phone like his streams he was playing um Indivisible um which was I think it's like from the same folks who made um Skull Girls Skull Girls yeah and I was like oh this is dope the music was good and like and it was like because I didn't even have like you know internet I was like oh I can like actually watch something and enjoy it so definitely mr (laughs) simple things um and also void prince void prince was like a huge like i don't know she like they're uh they really had like such a a a opening and like welcoming community and they and like ryu hashira and luna they've all just been like really really supportive so i really have to credit them to like they were one of the first people to really like encourage me in the very very beginning like hey like you know I think you do really well doing this so I would say those two for sure um and then like definitely like more along the way but shout out to Void and and Mr. Simple Things. Nice that's what's up. For somebody I guess new to Twitch how would you describe it what what is it in your own words like what would you Uh, say Twitch is? Twitch is is a platform I think it you can look at it a lot of different ways so I think when I when I describe Twitch to people in my life who do not know what this is, I just say, I just tell them like, okay, everyone knows what YouTube is. So I just kind of start with YouTube and I say, okay, okay. it's kind of like YouTube. You go there and there are videos made by like content creators. Um, but with Twitch, uh, the primary content is video games. You will see other things, uh, right. sports, uh, tech things, um, cooking, but I would say most people who are on Twitch play video games. Yeah. Um, and it's it's live. Uh, you can, I guess, show replays, but it's it's also typically focused on live streaming your content. Uh, mm-hmm. So um, yeah, that that that's kind of you know that's kind of explain it. And so you know, there's also a lot of community building. You can you know run into other like similar um streamers so there's speedrunners and completionists all these other people and there's a lot of people who just also just casually play 
that's kind of more what I do. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can really just kind of do whatever with it. I know there's a lot of like cooking streams that I follow too as well. So on Twitch? Yeah, yeah on Twitch. Yeah, okay. you can find and then like wrestling streams where people just show like old wrestling matches and they'll just kind of talk and give their own commentary. Nice. Um, yeah, there's there's a little there's a little bit of everything, but I would say it's it's focusing on video games, but they're starting to branch out. A lot of musicians as well, DJs, a lot of DJs yeah. on Twitch. And that's like a really, especially in this pandemic, I think yeah, a really yeah. helpful way for like DJs who were probably getting a lot of gigs and clubs. And maybe that's not like the safest or a lot of places still aren't open. Right. We're coming to Twitch and, you know, people can just donate directly to you while you just, you know, DJ in your own home. So um yeah there's a lot of content it's crazy you bring, you bring that up because I, I have a friend who's a dj and he's like part owner of the club that he works at too mm -hmm. and you know he was djing from home or whatever so i saw him doing that on facebook that's when he promoted it okay. but there was this one uh young asian girl who was djing and she had the entire room set up and like yeah. the background like she would raise her hands like the club or the crowd was in front of her like it was almost like that experience you, you would have being at the club or a really big concert. So I thought that was pretty mm -hmm. cool. But yeah. yeah. People find their own avenues, man, whenever, whenever the situation presents itself. So yeah, DJs really, I feel like made a, a positive impact on Twitch as opposed to all the different, there's so many different things that you can find on Twitch, but there's some things that are like, you know what? That's not really my cup of tea, but there's like, there's something for everybody. Of course. Mm -hmm. I, I want to ask something to this question. Mm -hmm. well, what game were you playing when you first got your really first big crowd? And okay. also, just, I mean, if you, if you can remember this time when somebody rated you for the first time, what was your reaction? Uh, I think there are clips of these things. I, like, I know viewers can oh. make clips of, like, your streams and stuff, so I'll have to check and see. I think my first, like, hype train or something was clipped or some, like, or highlighted. Okay. Um, but the, so I was playing uh, Breath of the Wild, and I was, I didn't start that on stream. I had already been playing it for, for, I guess, some months, and then I just said, okay, well, you know. We can just kind of keep running around because I didn't really have a much of a goal with that game either. I really was just kind of <laughs> running around. And then, um, yeah, and so that that is when, like, you know, slowly that started bringing a lot of people to the stream. And then I also started to play um, Borderlands 3 on stream a little bit, too, mm -hmm. just with, like, you know, just doing some random side quests and stuff. So I would say, yeah, really just those two games. I don't think I really played anything else besides that for like a, a, like a month or two. Yeah. yeah. I recall watching her play Breath of the Wild and most of the time she would do some story, but it was a hunt for the shrines most of the time. Yeah, the shrines. Shrines. yeah it was just boring. Then she came across something I had never seen before. And I'm like, hey, I don't know how to do that puzzle, so I can't help. But, you know, yeah. just some yeah, massive just, well, with so many. <laughs> Oh, like I'm glad I started like streaming like once I had already gotten really like good at the game because especially in the beginning when you don't have a whole lot of health or yeah. like stamina uh, you know it like it would you know it, it would get pretty bad I would die a lot so like you know by the time I started streaming I think I already had like at least one or two of the divine beasts so I mm. had like oh, okay. you know and so and I was going after a lot of shrines so like I put all of my like I was only putting all of my stuff into health, <laughs> which gotcha. I probably, by the time I beat the game, like I, my heart, like my health was like <laughs> all, like it was like basically, I was one heart short of two full bars. Uh, <laughs> no stamina. But no stamina. <laughs> like I had a little bit, but oh, I was like, no. oh no, I totally messed up. All and right. so basically I made like a lot of potions and stuff at the end. Right, right. I was like, oh no, what if, like I got so stuck on just wanting to be, <laughs> <laughs> like the, having the most health that like I can't even run that far without getting tired yeah. but it ended up working <laughs> out but yeah um I, I kind of forgot what the original question was no it was the which, oh, Breath was, of the Wild Breath has been of Wild. a lot of fun mm -hmm. and then like you, the moment that when you got your hype train or your first raid like what was your reaction oh um just I don't know I just freaked out I freaked out it was <laughs> <laughs> um you know uh, it, it was a very simple setup but I you know when you have like your headset in and you hear these alerts it does like although we, well you know you can make them whatever you want so my alert for when I get rated is like um Hanzo's ultimate and overwatch <laughs> oh, whatever nice. he whatever he's screaming in Japanese so it yeah. does like jolt my body a bit when I hear it I was like, oh like it's 
<laughs> it does startle you. So um, yeah, it was just really shocking. And honestly, it's been like a really positive experience. Like um, I, you know, I said really early on, like I would never do this if it wasn't like fun. And if, right. if it became right. like a, if it became like a chore, if it felt like a, uh, a drag, like, I, you know, I got a job, I got a day job, like, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't have to do this if it's not, if I'm uncomfortable or for right. just not enjoying it. So it's, it's honestly just been a lot of fun. Um, and I'm learning, it's, it's given me something to do in terms of like, you know, learning OBS and, and yeah. stream elements. There's a lot, there's always something like I'm adding stuff to my stream, like all the time, all the time. Cause it's like, oh yeah, I, now I can know, you know, now I can do this and like custom alerts and, um, it's just, yeah, it keeps my mind busy, you know? So it's, it's become a great part of my life. All right. So, so I'm kind of new to it. Explain that to me. I don't know what y'all were talking about there. Hype training rate. I'm not Ooh. familiar uh-huh. with it. So what, oh, what is sure. that? I'll start with a raid. Um, so a raid is just, it's another way to just kind of build community within Twitch. So let's say I'm streaming and, you know, I have like 30 viewers on and, you know, most people, I can only really speak from my experience, but I feel like a lot of people who are on Twitch and are like active on Twitch, they, they really do enjoy like the community side of things. So the raid, basically I'm sending my viewers to another person's stream. So I end my stream and they just Uh, move over to someone else. And so it's a big, so everyone, well, I mean, I think people who are starting out don't have alerts set up, but I mean, I sure didn't, but Mm -hmm. You know, if you have your alert set up, someone raids you, something you will come up on my screen and it's Hanzo for, you know, for me. Right, right. So I get the alert and I hear it. And like, um, also for my stream, like a whole bunch of emotes will fly across the screen, like, you know, and people can do whatever they want. So it's just the one <laughs> way of saying, and then, you know, I've gone to know a lot of streamers just in like the year that, well, almost a year that I've been doing it. So it's like one to say like, Hey, like another way of like, I can't like subscribe to everyone. <laughs> but yeah, what I can do yeah because you know anyone can follow but subscribing does cost so I'm like well you know I cannot follow I mean I cannot subscribe to like every single person that I'm a fan of but hey if you're streaming when I'm streaming I'd be happy to raid you like raid my people over like and people will follow and support so that's a raid that's good um yep. and so that's fun um and then what was oh a hype train so I don't know what the exact parameters of a hype train is, but it's basically, it, it triggers whenever a lot of people are fi- like financially like donating to you mm. within a mm. certain period of time. So okay. I, I don't, I think there's a way I can look this up. I don't know, but I think within like five minutes or something, whatever the amount of time, if like someone like subscribes and then like someone donates, like bits are like the little Twitch currencies, but you know, it's, you know, that's, it turns into money. Um, right. So when they're cheering, they're cheering with bits. So it's like a combination of like, either they subscribe, bought a subscription or people can gift out subscriptions, right. okay. gifting out subscriptions and like donating bits within a certain net window of time, it triggers it. And basically it like, um, it causes like a thing to come up on the screen. People just get hyped okay. about it. Like they want that's to cool. kind of, and then like, you know, especially if you have like a, a committed, like uh, support group, you know, s- supporters, you know, they'll want to like, sometimes we'll even like, if you're celebrating something big, like, let's say it's like your one year Twitch streaming, right, whatever, right. they'll, you'll be like, oh, let's trigger, like, they'll even say it like in the chat where you can like, oh, let's trigger a hype train. So that's it. And then like when people who donate to the hype train, they get like special like Twitch exclusive emotes. Mm. And so like, you can kind of collect these little... I get emote things you can use <laughs> that part's kind of hard to explain but yeah it's just it's yeah. basically just a way for whoever's in your stream who wants to support to say like hey like we're really like enjoying you and want to support so they don't happen often or at least you know I don't think they do right um, okay. so when they do happen it is kind of like special a rush okay yeah it's like a yeah because that happens you know and depending mm-hmm. on the streamer, they'll have like different things that happen when a hype uh, hype train is uh, happening. So it just it adds it's fun for everyone. I think it can like kind of uh, give everyone like something to be excited for, especially if they're like if they have or there. Some people do like um I haven't done this, but some people do like marathon type things. Like I've oh, streamed okay. for a long time, but if you're yeah. doing something yeah. like if you're trying to meet a certain goal 
and then you get the hype train it just adds like another level to the stream i've seen some of those streams where they're, they're doing like donations or like uh charity mm -hmm. events things like that yeah charity events oh, yeah that's, cool. that's actually how i got into yakuza um <laughs> okay so i was watching uh so we talked about earlier like you know people that i really enjoyed the void prince their partner, uh, Ryu Hashira, was doing a, a charity stream for, I think, autism, autism awareness. Mm -hmm. okay. And they were, he, he was just giving out like different giveaways. And I was like, oh, I want to play Yakuza. And so I just kind of like randomly, because, you know, you don't ever feel like you're going to win something when those things happen. Right. But I'm like, OK, whatever. Like I, I entered the little giveaway based off of like how many channel points I had. And um, I won it, but I won the bundle that had like three, four, and five in it. So I was oh, like, oh okay. no. Like, I, <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I was like, well, I'll just, you know, I'll buy the, the, the origin bundle and just start from the beginning. So I did. And I've just, yeah. And actually I, I just start. So I won that Christmas of last year. I'm just now getting to the, the bundle that I won because I had oh, to play wow. like three other <laughs> games. It took me nine months to play Yakuza Zero, uh, Kiwami One, and Kiwami Two. So and they I'm, are long slowly, games, though. They are long. They're all good, though. Ah, yeah. it's just like anyone who's into anime, you <laughs> love Yakuza because like the stories are amazing, and there's the fighting is it's like it's really cool fighting like combat style, and um, the music's good. It, it, uh, it's just it's just really good. It's a great so, franchise. Nice. Yeah, it's a great franchise. But the thing is, like, I feel like I'll never catch up now because like, <laughs> there's always going to be another game. And then there's spin, there's, there's spin-off titles. And yeah, I'm like, Lost Judgment. Uh, just came Lost out. Judgment, yeah. Lost Judgment just came out. And I'm like, man, I don't know if I'll ever <laughs> catch up, but maybe. I don't know. It'll give me something to work for. Are you in the camp to start with Zero or Kiwami? Heard I started both. with Zero. Okay. Yeah. So zero is the route. Okay. Yeah. You know, I feel people, people can start with either, but I feel like Zero gives you a whole lot, like, you get a lot of information that makes, okay. I feel like Kiwami 1 is a better story based off of what you experienced in oh. Zero. And I guess you can learn it later, but then I feel like it doesn't, it just doesn't, if, right. I think Kiwami was like a, Kiwami 1, it had like a really great story, but like, because I was already invested in these characters, I'm like, okay, like, I really want to see how this goes, so... Um, but yeah, I know it comes out later. So I would say start with zero for sure. Nice. Do you uh, remember the moment you got affiliated? Y yes. because <laughs> It was actually two weeks later. So I started on Halloween. So I'm That's approaching right, one you year. You did. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And it was November 14th. And um, it was kind of wild. I was like, I really, when I started doing this, I really didn't. I don't know. I didn't know what to expect of it because <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just like playing video games and like, I like talking to people. I enjoy like making new friends and meeting new people and, you know, thinking of creative, like fun ways to do things. So I just like, oh, I just want something fun that I can do with my time. So when like that happened, like two weeks later, I'm like, oh, so I should probably like start thinking of like emotes and stuff. Cause that unlocks, um, once you become, affiliated you can have your own custom emotes and chat and I was like oh do I need to start like <laughs> thinking about <laughs> stuff like this but luckily I already had like people just in you know in my life um and so it was really cool that like you know there was just like a warm welcome like That's pretty awesome. er like early on and um I think one of the most interesting things that like, that helped me kind of get that push to affiliate this is completely random so I, you know I was working a lot and um, what I would do is like, while I was working, I would just have Twitch open. So I would like, I, will, I like pulling up speed runs. I don't do it because that's just not what I'm skilled at. <laughs> but I like watching speed runs. I'm like, damn, like people are like really out here, like breaking the, Yeah, breaking the game. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, like respect. And then like, it just takes so much precision, like to, you know, really like get these like short times for some of these games so my favorite game to watch speed running is donkey kong country 2 from the super nintendo oh, it's wow. like my favorite game of my childhood the music <laughs> is like the best and so i was just like and it's just like something that like people don't really because i'm working so people don't really talk when they're speed running because they're focused so i'm like okay i could just listen to the music <laughs> it's like i don't you know whatever so long story short 
um, I ended up getting really involved, not involved, because it's not like I'm doing any speed running, but I got really like integrated into the Brazilian Donkey Kong Country 2 speed running community. <laughs> nice. I did not know when I clicked on a random stream for Donkey Kong Country 2 speed running, I did not know, like, because I was still, I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't realize that it was like a Portuguese speaking stream until like a little <laughs> later. Cause I'm like, oh, I, I was like, I don't really understand what's going on, but you know, whatever. I'm still like cheering. And I'm like, oh, the, the language I'm not really reading. And I was like, oh, like this, they're, they're in Brazil. And so a lot of like, I guess because I was like the one random American in this random, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but maybe because I was like the one random American girl in this like Brazilian stream, a random one at that. Like, it wasn't like I picked something that was like, at the top of the, I was just, it was just like somebody, you know, right, right. But yeah. like, actually, he's like on like bats. Sh so shout out to bats, B A T Z in Brazil. Okay. <laughs> he actually is on like the like speedrun.com. Like it, you know, I had no idea like this was like a well known, well known huh? <laughs> Brazilian wow. speedrunner. But like, <laughs> anyway, I didn't want to like be rude and be like, you know, so I asked if they could teach me to say a few things in Portuguese, just like, like the simple stuff. So right. mm -hmm. I can say like, good morning or like, good day, good afternoon, good luck. And like a couple of like curse words, of course. So <laughs> <laughs> always, always. Without everybody they, they were quick to teach me like that stuff too. So, yeah. and so I would just kind of like, and so they would ask me even before I really even thought about streaming, like, Hey, you know, you should probably do this too. You know, we would love to see you stream. And so they started following me before I even like thought I was going to do this. Okay. So when I started streaming, I would like, I would say some of my very like early on, like viewers just in the very beginning were, you know, like friends from Brazil who just wanted nice. to see who this random American girl was awesome. <laughs> in their chat. So, um, Diavolo. I can't pronounce. It's like Diavolo Jivesk. Uh, he would often like just watch me play Breath of the Wild. And just, like, or the name know, in your stream. Before. Yeah, Diavolo. Yeah. So um, definitely some, there would be some streams where it would just be me and then Diavolo just kind of like, and like, I didn't have my camera on or anything because I was pretty shy. So I would just like, I would talk or into the mic, but I wouldn't like turn my camera on and he would just kind of chat too yeah. um and that, and that was kind of how it was in the in the very beginning it was always an origin story once you become affiliated <laughs> so remember those moments yeah yeah <laughs> right. so that that's kind of how it, it just it kind of naturally flowed and um i just i'm really thankful to like that people just kind of like were able to just help me get across because it, it does get it's a little hard in the beginning but then like once you kind of get the encouragement it, it 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 can work really well for anybody who's listening to this point this is a more fairly serious question what are the, some of the things you've encountered being a female streamer and also being a female streamer of color and you are mixed so for anybody who doesn't know mm -hmm. tiff's background you know she, she will of course elaborate right now okay sure yeah so <laughs> i'm i'm you know i'm a black woman um but i come of you know mixed heritage my mom is from the philippines uh, and, you know, she was born and raised there and, you know, my dad is black, um, and my mom is biracial, but, you know, when people see me with my family, they are, you know, not so much now, but definitely growing up, there was a lot of questions. Cause my grandmother is like this full Filipino woman, short and just full of life. And then, <laughs> you know, but, you know, a lot of my, a lot of my cousins are mixed, you know, whether, whether it's black and Filipino, I have an aunt who is, Filipino and white. So we, we, you know, we run every, every, you know, Crayola color. <laughs> 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 so yeah, we, but um, I love my family. So it is, I think, um, you know, a huge part of who I am. And I'm one thing that I am grateful for Twitch is that like, you know, I, I grew up in a predominantly black and Latino area. Uh, but I didn't know too many Filipinos in like growing up, like around me. So, you know, besides the times we would like visit like my family in like other states, I didn't have like that like daily community, uh, a Filipino community besides just like my family. But through Twitch, just through just kind of like really just coincidental, like not necessarily like seeking certain, certain friendships, but I've really gotten to become friends with Filipino streamers just nice. 
through like, hey, you know, supporting each other or, you know, yeah. someone else and I follow them. So, of course, I want to be cool with you. So, like, I really like that was really impactful being able to like share like, you know, not only Twitch community, but like cultural community with people that I didn't necessarily get as a child. So um, that's that's been really positive. But the question was like my experience as a, a woman of color on Twitch mm -hmm. and you know, it's um, on an average day. I, you know, it's great. I love it. Like I stream almost every day and it's not because I like have to, it's just like, I want to, it's fun. And, you know, I, nice. like, especially people who come and we've, I've gotten to know like off stream, whether we like, you know, play games like together or chat off stream. It's like, oh yeah. Like I'm genuinely happy to know what's going on in the lives of the people who are in the stream and getting updates like I hope your family's good like you know mm -hmm. like just uh, it it it's really like um it adds such a uh, it, it really enriches my life like the friends that I've been been able to make because I would say the majority of the, like, the people who watch my streams are also streamers like there's mm -hmm. I would say it's the only really a, a small handful of people who are regulars in my chat who don't stream at all like everyone at least uh -huh. whether it's twitch some people it's YouTube, like pretty much everyone like that I see on a regular basis has, you know, content on their pages. So right. um, it's just fun to be like around people that are like you, but it's just not, but it's not always, uh, you know, fun when, you know, I think anyone who's been like in and out of Twitch has no, like in the last I mean, it's been, it's been going on forever, but like, at least like in the last six months or so, like the hate raids have been like really bad. And I got hit like before it got really, really like bad with like all the Hoss bots and stuff, mm -hmm. but I got hit before and like earlier in the year. And that one was like, really like a shocker. Cause that like, you know, you're not expecting it. And like, mm -hmm. they even got into like my discord. And so to see like that kind the mm -hmm. the amount you know, I, f I feel like the how much they went out of their way to do, it was really disturbing. And like, I ended stream and it was just like, oh my gosh, I was like really shook for like a, you know, I, I took some time. I didn't stream for a bit. I was like, I just, it was, it was just so unsettling, but that's also life though. I feel like I've been a black woman my whole life you know, there have been other, you know, times in my life where either my race or my gender or just who I am caused someone to want to show hatred right and right. you know but that was definitely the first time that like that happened on stream and it was just like whoa like what is going on but you know even moving away from like hate raids it wasn't like that was like the first time like I had to like address something like while I was streaming because I think a lot of times you know Twitch is like, it, it does connect people. You know, I've yeah. met some amazing people through Twitch that I would otherwise not have any contact with or have, you know, ever met. But I think a lot of times people will come to Twitch and they, they want to like grasp onto to a person mm -hmm. and, you know, being, you know, a woman, being a black woman, a woman of color on Twitch, I am not in the majority. So I think like a lot of times people will come to my stream. Not, it's not even a lot. I would just say, you know, every now and then someone will come to the stream and like suddenly it's like they become really possessive and it's really unsettling. Like they think, mm. especially they'll come like often and like if they donate or subscribe and there's like money involved, suddenly they get a little bit more aggressive with how like they interact with me. Like you know, backseating happens regardless of whether people support or donate right. or whatever. But, you know, like there's, there's this weird connection of like, hey, I just donated. Why aren't you doing what I'm telling you to do? Like, why aren't you mm -hmm. listening to me or giving me a, a, a different type of attention? Right. And that is that is really weird to deal like deal with like right on the spot because you're just like, oh, oh, I don't know if this is going in like a, a a direction that I'm like feeling comfortable with. So yeah, um, that, that was something that I had to kind of learn. And it's not like it was something that happened often because also like, you know, I mark on my stream, um, you know, this is a, 
intended for adults. Like, you know, I curse, you know, and also I don't want, I just, I honestly just do not want anyone who is not an adult in my chat period. Like, I don't really like, like, if you are, I rather you not talk about your age in the chat if you are not an adult, because that just puts people, I don't know. I don't really feel comfortable with that just happening in my chat with with people who are talking with a, a child. Yeah. So, but sometimes they like, you know, all it's only just like an age verification. So they can put like a like a underage person could like put any kind of birthday they want in the chat right. and it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so sometimes it's obvious that I'm talking to a child and like I have to like realize and like, you know, and they usually mean well too. Like I can't tell you how many times someone who is definitely not an adult who, you know, cause I usually like, if I play like a Mario game or something, you know, whatever, they'll just click a birthday and they'll talk with me. And like, I know I'm talking to a, someone's kid and they'll say something like, it's always when they ask, um, are you a mom? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not a mom. And she's like, you would be, you would make such a cool mom. I wish my mom were like you. And I'm like, wow. mm. trigger right there. There, that's a yeah. Player. I'm like, yeah. no, I don't. That's not what you're. <laughs> yeah, I just like and so that's happened like a like I wouldn't say a lot, but like with certain games, it brings certain types of people, and you just kind of have to learn how to deal with that, like as you go. But but also, I don't like whenever things happen on stream and I'm uncomfortable, I try not to um, let everyone else feel what I'm feeling. Like I'll either, you know, use humor or if it's something like egregious, like there have been moments where someone just said something completely out of line with race and I'll just ban you like that. No, yeah. but <laughs> I'm just like, that's fine. But if it's just something where I think there's a misunderstanding, I try to at least come at it still friendly, but also just saying, Hey, you know, let's not do that here, you know, or let's just keep, let's, let, let's keep it. Or if it gets political, you know, yeah. I'm fine with certain subjects, but like, sometimes I'm like, okay, let's, let's keep this fun and lighthearted. So I think there's a lot that goes into streaming in general for anyone. I mean, cause right. you know, anyone who puts themselves out there, like you have my respect because it's really, you know, it's, you have to, you have to be really vulnerable. Like, you know, you're, especially if you're, I'm really shy, like outside of Twitch. Like if you were to ask me like two years ago, like in a couple of years, you'll be doing this, this, and this. And I'm like, you have lost, <laughs> you have mm-hmm. lost mine. Like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. So like just the idea of like, like putting yourself out there, it's, it's a lot, but you know, just like in life, you know, I think my, my lived experience, I'm, I'm happy to be who I am. So, um, even on the not so good moments, they are few and far, be- like few and far between. Oh, that's good. You know, um, but yeah. it's not always great, but I think that's life too. Like my, that's my lived experience as a black woman is like, I love who I am, but there are some, some times where I just like, yeah, like who I am affects how I am treated. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's that. it, huh? yeah. Mm-hmm. So you talked about how you, um, I guess, do a good job of addressing it while you're like, I guess, midstream. Mm-hmm. What about off stream? Is there like how you deal with the negativity, trolls? Is there, yeah. would you like to devote on like how you kind of just cope with it? Well, there are a couple ways, but I think now that I've been doing this for a little bit, I now, like I have moderators as well, like in, in chat and I don't like require them. Like, it's not oh, like okay. you have to. So I just have this, yeah, shout out to Ark. Oh, yes, that's the homie right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ark, they have they like they have been with me through some like and it really just takes one. Like I have like a bunch of moderators, but if you just know that, like, hey, like when I'm streaming, there's someone who's here who who is with the sh- well, who is, you know, has my back, right? Yeah. And who like if, if they 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 know me well enough that like they kind of know certain things that I would not feel comfortable with. So they mm. usually know when to chime in and when to just kind of fall back and let me let me speak for myself. But like, yeah, so I think that's one way to handle it. Just having at least just one or two moderators and you know, who are available. Cause I don't tell anyone to like, hey, you have to be online. Right. Online. Right. Cause one, I'm not paying you. So <laughs> right. like you're good. It has to be something that like, if you're free and if you, you know, if you're willing, you know, I'm just really appreciative um, that like I could like, so I have like, I have my own discord and I have um, 
a private channel just for moderators so that we can all be in communication. And I think okay. that just kind of, just knowing that like, think, you know, and sometimes we'll talk about things that are like, you know, happening that, you know, we can look back on like, hey, like maybe we should, you know, when certain things like, like certain topics are being joked about, let's see if we can, you know, maybe this shouldn't be like joked about on stream okay. kind of things. Like just things like that are, you know, help me like, with the you know harder moments more difficult moments on 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 twitch but right. also i just i just try to like you know i try to tell myself often like i don't have a schedule i don't have to do this like some people do have like consistent schedules but i never want to feel like this is like a, a Nine job. To five job yeah. yeah like if i start feeling like this is and so there are times where like you know i'll update the discord but i'll i'll tell people like yeah i'm just you know I'm a little burnt out. I'm just gonna, you know, and you know, I'll, you know, I'll say even like, hey, you can catch me off stream. Like, if you still want to play like Smash Bros. or Mario Kart, like, please hit me yeah. up. But like streaming, I just don't know if I can do that for a little bit. And that's always good. I think being able to anything like this, being able to be like take a moment away from it as well is just like really important. If there are things yeah. that need to be adjusted just to make you more comfortable, just you know, it's your stream. Do do you know? You just do take what makes time. you feel comfortable and take time when you need to take time and now that's actually the, the statement you just say you know it's your stream do what makes you feel comfortable that's an interesting sideways because i wasn't present at the time when you did it but you actually mm -hmm. came out on stream to your viewers your followers i did what I was did. that experience like <sighs> emotional i could i definitely cried a lot it was well oh. so i'll i'll give some background and then yeah. i'll talk about that moment so you know um <sighs> it I've it, always kind of lived, <laughs> I've always kind of lived in a world that, where I always felt like I could not belong in, in multiple, like, you know, I couldn't like exist in just one box, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we talked earlier, I'm black, but I'm also Filipino. And there was this dynamic of like, oh, I'm visibly black. Like no one ever just comes up to me and does not think that I'm black, but like, there's this deep part of my childhood that I don't often get to talk with people about just because it just doesn't come up. So there's like these two, like a duality, right? Right. And that is how I view like my sexuality as well, where there are these, you know, I'm a very open person. And what was a huge struggle for me as well was not being able to be my authentic self with people that I was close with. So like, you know, um, you know, my close friends, you know, my cousin, I have a close cousin, they knew about who I was, like, that, you know, I'm attracted to men and women, and I've been with, you know, men, and I've been with women, but I would keep, you know, the women's side of my attraction away from the people who were the closest to me, like my mom, and that was really, really difficult, um, but I used Twitch, not intentionally, but, like, through Twitch, I was able to just be myself like because you know outside of like the few friends who were already you know friends with me before twitch other than that it really no one else really knew me on twitch like I was like I had nothing to lose and nothing really to like be afraid of because I'm like oh these people are meeting me exactly how I present myself as opposed to like you know right. people who have known you forever and then you're in your 30s and you have to tell them something you know something new to them but has been hidden from them it was just it was, that was really difficult so right um I turned 31 this year and uh my birthday was in April so it was a nice spring day and um at this point I was already very very open um with my stream about who I was that was never but you know it, it wasn't like a day-to-day -day topic it was just new that like I was queer pansexual um you know, some people say bisexual as well. And I'm fine with that label too, but I think pansexual or queer definitely felt like a better um, ad identifier for me because that also, um, to me, include it's more inclusive of people who are either trans or um, non-binary as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, that was not like a secret to the stream, but I remember it was my birthday. Me and my mom planned to uh, have lunch and 
I was, you know, it's still the pandemic. So our favorite restaurant did not have any dining in, even though we were both like vaccinated, um, they were not doing any dining in. So we went to this like lake, um, like in a public park okay. and we're eating our lunch. And I was just like, ah, we're just laughing and joking. And the food was so good. It was like this Korean, it's like this Korean fried chicken. Have y'all ever had the Korean fried chicken before? Not yet. I know this is random, but shout out to Bonchon. If you got a Bonchon, B-O-N-B-H-O-N near you, amazing. I don't know how they do it, but it's a different style of, you know, it's just really good. So we were at the lake and we were eating like all this delicious food. And I started to like tear up because I'm like, you know, I don't, well, I feel like people have these moments in life regardless of their personal like identity or experiences. But there was just this moment where I was just like, ah. This is like the best day. Like I am, the weather's perfect. I'm eating a good meal with my mom. We're sitting at the lake. We're like cracking up because there were like these geese like walking up. Cause you know, they smell food and they're like getting like, you know how geese can be. <laughs> yeah, it can sure. get a little toxic. So it was just like, we're laughing and joking about how all oh, that, you know, that goose going to get you or whatever. And I just kept, I got like, I got started to like cry. And I was like, ah. cause like, I knew that like, this was the perfect day in my book. Like, I can't think of the last time I had a perfect day. Like, when was like, like really? Like, when was the last time you felt like you had a, like, nothing went wrong, perfect right. day? And so here I am, yeah. like, damn, I finally get, like, this perfect day in my mind where I, like, I couldn't have changed anything about this day. But there's this, this, this part of me that, like, my mom has no clue about. And at the time, someone had, like, organically and authentically entered my life who was a woman. And at this point I had talked to my mom about her, but like very vague, very like, you know, like I didn't want to give anything away that would make my mom think that this was more than just a friend, but like, you know, this was happening and I'm just like crying. And so I finally just tell my mom and I'm like, you know, and there was like a lot of like hugging and crying, but it was just so positive. And like, here I am nervous you know, and wow. crying. Cause I think like my mom's going to, oh, wow. you know, you know, cause she, you know, you know, she comes from a, you know, very like Catholic background and I'm just right. like, oh, this is going to be a wrap. And like, she and I were, cause we, you know, it felt like such a perfect moment. I felt like I cannot go li- I mean, this sounds like really intense, but I just felt like I didn't want to go like one more day without her knowing like this huge part of who I was. Yeah. And you know, uh, she had questions and most people kind of do when it comes to coming out, which is, you know, I I take no offense, but like, she just kind of wanted to like, understand that, like, just how long and like, what is, what are you saying? And I'm like, well, this is just who I am. And I don't want you to feel like you didn't know me all this time, but now you just know more. And, um, that really led to me coming out on stream as well, because I was just so happy. Like I was just happy that I like literally just like, Oh, like I did. I was like, Whoa. And so like, you know, I did like a birthday stream. And so like I had shared like, um, you know, what that moment was with my stream, like on my birthday, like later on. And, um, you know, I started crying again, but it was also like (laughs) the same, like, again, like really positive reaction and like, um, you know, there was, there was a little bit of fear of that too, because I'll, I'll be honest. I think there is this perception, right. Of bisexuality or whatever you want to call it, pansexuality, queerness in that. I think it's unfortunate that when men come out as bisexual, there's this like belief that like, oh, you're not really bisexual. You just are oh, gay yeah, and you don't want the stigma of of being seen that way right that's that's a myth uh, like bisex but bisexuality is real same thing for women or people who you know women presenting you know i think there is like this myth of like when you hear of a bisexual woman or a woman who you know is attracted to both men and women you feel like there's like this myth of like oh she's even like she's promiscuous almost and it's like no like yeah. that you don't want or you know or you're really straight and you just also you know you experiment or whatever you know words you want to use so like I did have like this kind of nervousness of like 
being open about that because I didn't want, because that has happened in my life where like, uh, you know, someone that I consider a friend, like a, 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 you know, a woman friend, they find this out about my like sexuality. And then suddenly it's like a, it switches a little bit. And I'm like, wait, like we don't have to, <laughs> things don't have to change necessarily just because you learn. Yeah. You know, when I learn about anyone's sexuality, I don't assume, I don't make an assumption that like suddenly they are not, or they are attracted to me. I just, I just see people as people and right. when I have a connection with someone, that is when, you know, that is when we can have like different conversations, but just being who you are shouldn't sway one way or the other, you know, how people treat you, but that's just kind of life too. But um, coming out on stream was really, really positive. And honestly, it's, it felt like when I came out to my mom and eventually like other people in my family, like it was still very really scary, but like it gave me, like, I would really say that Twitch gave me a lot of courage because like, hey, that's good. that was really like my first time, you know, I made like YouTube videos as like a teenager, but I was never in them. <laughs> I was like recording my friends doing silly stuff in class or whatever. Right. But like, I know that was like my first time really like putting myself out there. And, you know, I think I was like, well, if I can do this, you know, what is my mom going to do with me on my birthday? We don't live together. I don't, depend on her for resources you know what what is what is telling the truth really going to do here so it was really one of the best decisions that i've made in my life wow props to you Very... that's a big oh thing thank you thanks do. for letting me share i was like a little nervous but who oh no no <laughs> not at all that's at all, uh, amazing like... very powerful beautiful oh, you did a great you. job of just laying out that uh thank how you, you felt and, um, i was i was in track um, yeah, and like uh you know i think we're all we're all grown here yeah. i think when I, there, you know, someone organically entered my life and I know what it's like as a, just a human being to be forced as a secret from someone, you know, and I, and, you know, I've gotten older and we all like made mistakes in our dating lives or romantic lives, but I would never want anyone to feel like, oh, you have to be hidden from the people who matter to me. Right. And I think that was just like the, the the key thing there and you know so much time has like passed since then and i'm just happy to just i don't know be me and i'm still me uh just but yeah. uh yeah, yeah that's it <laughs> <laughs> well uh for the person that actually came into tiff's life organically big shout out to mm -hmm. you big shout yeah. out to you so you brought up earlier you're doing a, you have a voice acting demo yeah i do so um whew, i guess let me think where do i start with that and this came from Twitch um, though, right? Like somebody saw you it, on Twitch? It started with Twitch. Yeah, yep. it started with Twitch. So I was just streaming, you know, maybe like a month or so into it. And someone else that I was following, but also following me back had came to the stream. And up until this point, like people had said like, oh, like, do you do voice acting? And I would just say that, oh, no, you know, whatever. You know, people say that I have not a nice voice, but like I never really thought of anything like that mm -hmm. but he just kind of was like I wouldn't say persistent but just like every now and then he would just kind of be like I think you should really like give it a give it a try and I'm like I guess okay you know um and so finally he he sends me some information for this like uh this studio that voice you know voiceover studio entertainment studio that did um 15 minute consultations for free and so he said, just, you know, just talk to them. It's a free consultation. You don't, you know, you don't know what they're going to say. And I said, okay, you know, what for, I mean, because I think the free was what got me. I was like, I'm not going to spend any money for someone <laughs> right. to tell me I'm trash. Like, um, you know, if it's free, okay, fine. So I did a little <laughs> consultation and, you know, we did like a lesson. And so he talks to me and he says, you know what? Um, Cause this, this is on zoom. He's like, you know what? I'm going to tell you the truth. A lot of people want to do this now, the voice acting stuff, because you can do it from home and, yeah. you know, it's a pandemic. So people are at home more. So the, the industry is definitely getting flooded right now. There are a lot of people who want to do this. So, you know, we can't work with everyone who, you know, who comes through here, but I think you have a voice. I think you have a really nice voice. And I think you do have like a predisposition and, and, and the ability to do this you know, based off of like, you know, when I give you feedback, you're, you're actually able to change your voice. 
So I said, okay, um, you know, I'm not going to quit my day job, but I'm willing to keep trying this. So this was March of this year. And so I would just, you know, basically it was just like my, I kind of just treated it like I was in school again. So I would do, I have, I would have like a lesson once a month and, you know, we just kept working together, just me and this voice coach and we decided, you know, okay, let's, let's make a demo. Like, let's go ahead and try to like, get this out there. And, you know, you can kind of just do your own thing from here. And I said, okay. So we actually recorded it, um, two weeks ago. Oh, it's pretty and fresh. It, um, so I only, I've only had it for or maybe not even fully two weeks now. I've only oh, had it for maybe fresh. like, Oh, I think we, no, we recorded it two weeks ago. I've had, I've had the actual demo itself. Cause they, you know, had to chop it up and make it look cool <laughs> with like the music and stuff. But like, <laughs> I've had like the final version for about a week. And so that has been one of like the coolest things that I've done, because like, again, I'm very like shy, very introverted. Right. And then I, like, because someone came to my stream was like, and just was like, Hey, I think you should consider voice acting and me being like, no, but okay. <laughs> but if, if, like, if, the, if someone will talk to me for free and talk to me about my voice, I'll see what happens. And so like yeah. it, that kind of really snow, snowballed into something much bigger, but, and I probably shouldn't say this on stream, but like when I stream, especially like early on, like um, when I didn't have as many like people, like in, in terms of like viewers, mm-hmm. I would use my streams as a way to practice voice stuff yeah, of course. because I was just like, oh, you know, I'm playing, I'm usually playing a game with some kind of story in it. Right. And not <laughs> yeah. everything has a cut scene because, you know, budgets are, you know, crazy. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> if they're not like doing the, the voicing and the cut scenes, like I'll just kind of try. And that way it was like low pressure. Cause I'm, I didn't want people to really know, like people kind of knew, but I didn't want to announce like, hello, I am practicing voice for this <laughs> right. stream. Like I don't want, but I just knew like, oh, that is just like whenever, whenever they had some like dialogue and it wasn't being voiced by someone, I would right. just try just to practice. And then I was also doing those lessons once a month. So I'd be happy to like, yeah, play, if you have, if you know, you have some like one minute clip, we'll talk more after I play it, but it just, okay, you know, it just was just like what to me, voiceover and Twitch kind of go hand in hand. Like, although I don't officially blend them, I'm like, well, why not just practice a voice here, especially if it's something like ridiculous and, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm usually really like relaxed on my stream. So I just kind of talk like how we're talking, right. but, um, okay. I am so lucky. Today is a scratch five instant lottery day. Cause I'm feeling lucky. I am lucky. When you need to take five, make it a Reese's take five. Chocolate pretzels and caramel wrapped up together in yummy deliciousness. She said, what? When she say that to you? Was she on that broke down cell plan? Honey, there are so many dropouts on that service, you never know what anyone is saying. When she gets T-Mobile, then I'll believe what she said is what she said. Insurance.com. Fast, free car insurance quotes. Start comparing rates from top providers today. The upside to having a husband? He picks up my McDonald's spicy chicken sandwich. Although now they do deliver. Hmm, upside. Good question. With Chime Online Banking, manage all your accounts from your phone. Enjoy over 38,000 free ATMs and earn 0.5% APY just by banking with us. Bank better. Bank with Chime. Yo. Okay, hopefully y'all heard all that. That was not all you, Tiff. That was me. No, I'm yes. like I'm literally almost in tears right now because I'm like oh. I'm like giddy for you because I'm like the Reese's one got me though the Reese's one. Yeah, that <laughs> was probably Reese's. my favorite. I was probably I was that was probably my favorite. That and like the McDonald's one I yeah. had the most fun with. The T-Mobile one was a little like oh okay sure sure but um yeah I, I had a lot of fun making that and that took two hours. That took two hours, but you could you could hear where he's directing you and like you're changed, like for real. I guess yeah, you're down the truth. So... You changed just like on point. Oh, like I'm glad. Uh, that <laughs> wow, makes me giddy. You know, like... I'm glad that it, I'm, I'm glad it and there's been such a really positive reaction. So, like, just to kind of talk a little bit about how I've been like integrating this since like the last week. So, um, right now, if anyone basically anyone can listen to it like I'm not going to really like charge people to listen to it necessarily but if you are subscribed to me on Twitch um and you're in my discord server you get like a private access to a channel where I'm just chronicling this whole thing so 
you know, I put the demo and then I'm also cutting up pieces from all of the lessons I've been taking. So I'm going to make little snippets out of those. And nice. then I'll, you know, so basically just kind of like more behind the scenes stuff. And then that way, like, you know, it's just, it, it's not like the main thing I'm doing, but if you just want to know, you can be subscribed and you kind of have like this extra stuff. And so um, I also, I don't know if y'all are familiar with, it's called Kofi. Well, I think it's pronounced coffee, but it's K-O hyphen F-I. It's kind of like um, Patreon. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. In terms of like people can like follow you and like, you know, but the, the real reason like co well, coffee is really popular with like Twitch streamers is that like, um, unlike Patreon, you can link it to like your Twitch, like put it in your OBS. And so if someone donates to you through them, it'll still come up as an alert on your stream. Mm -hmm. And like, unlike Twitch though, um, Twitch takes a cut like of each subscription and like donations where with Kofi, it doesn't take a cut. So the donations do go like directly to you. So basically I just made like two avenues for the voiceover stuff. So you can be subscribed and I'll have like the private channel where all that stuff goes or on Co Kofi, Kofi, <laughs> coffee, However you, you, say can, it. <laughs> you can, yeah, you, you can, you know, have like a, I have like a voiceover tier that you can like same cost of as a Twitch subscription, but you can just do it there and I'll put all the same stuff, you know, there oh, nice. and you can like, but you'll also like, if you do support me on there, you get like a special role in the discord. So, gotcha. you know, you get like a special name, like highlighted thing. So. If you um, had yeah. your choice, do you have an ideal role that you would like to kind of, like, do you like to be funny, dramatic? Um, <laughs> I think, so, when I first started doing this, I felt like doing, like, the commercial stuff was easiest, because, like, I, I kind of have, like, a pretty, I wouldn't say plain, but, you know, I don't no, really no. have, like, a thick accent or anything, right. like, I just kind of, so I was, like, so the lessons that were, like, the easiest for me in terms of, like, oh, yeah, like, you know, we can do this, were, like, the commercials, and like the, especially like when we ever, we did like medicine commercials, you know, like where they have to do like the list of symptoms or whatever. <laughs> right, right, yeah. But then I'm like, ah, oh, you know, I don't know if I'll feel good about that at the end of the day. Like, <laughs> right. but, the, uh, the coach's name, can you say that. his name? <laughs> oh, shoot. Uh, Bruce Cronenberg. Bruce so, Cronenberg. Shout yeah, out to you, out Bruce, man, bro. Bruce Cronenberg. Tip, tip yes, so amazing. Um, Abacus <laughs> Entertainment. I, I, I give, a, you know, honestly, you know, this, they're not paying me to say this. But if you're just curious about doing this, they all, you know, they obviously do free consultations. I'm sure they're busy, but like you can get on the <laughs> you can get on the calendar and just have a little 15 minute, whatever, 20 minute conversation. Because you don't really know until you have like a professional hear your voice. But you know, right. so yeah, shout out to Bruce Cronenberg in New York City. Um, right. That's not my location, but that Abacus Entertainment is in New York City. You can go there in person, but they'll work with you from wherever you're located. So um, the demo was recorded remotely. Like I just had to get the software and I was like recording myself doing the takes. Like I would hit the you know, button, do the different, okay. like we would do the different takes and I would send them the, the, um, the files and they did the, you know, all the, the engineering and sent it back. So I highly recommend them if, if, you know, awesome. if, if anyone's curious, you know, it does, it does, it is an investment after a certain point, but you know, if you just want to kind of have someone listen to you, you know, what do you have to yeah. lose? <laughs> right. <laughs> Very true. Oh, but I don't think I answered your question in terms of my ideal. Oh um, yeah. You kind of did. I would love to hear like my voice in like an indie video game. Oh, um, nice. Just, you know, not like a huge, obviously not a huge, like triple A title, but just something, you know, made by a small, you know, dev team. If, if they just need a voice, I would love to lend my voice to something like that. Or, you know, and I think, you know, we're, we all seem to be pretty nerdy here. I think I would be like remiss to say, you know, I would love to be like on a dubbed anime of something. But... Right, here we go. That's what <laughs> I, I just, wanted to hear. <laughs> that would be all so right. cool. Like, so, I mean, but the, I know that that is a, that is very, that, that's a long-term goal kind of thing. I, I would love to hear myself in an anime dub, but I mean, it, 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 smaller projects like a commercial radio commercial or um or an indie game for sure interesting to me that you know you said you want to do voice acting and you started with mm -hmm. twitch and this is <laughs> it's just a trickle effect this is it's taking you so many places just right. by you know hey it's a pandemic 
I like playing games. Let me just hop on yeah. the Switch platform and just have fun. And that's what you've been doing this whole time. So yeah, um, and thank you for saying that because I think if if I could sum up my entire experience in like a thought, you really nailed it. Of like, you know, I I've just kind of been going with it. Like mm-hmm. I I did not like have like these goals or like specific things that I wanted to do, but I just kind of was like, well, this sound this feels you know this sounds interesting let me just go with it and then like the voice stuff I'm like well I don't really know but I'll just you know I'll just see how it goes right and so now that I'm kind of like doing this more actively I'm like okay you know this this could actually go somewhere but in the beginning it really was just kind of like you know I'm really into like the universe and stuff but like just being open you know just being open to whatever life wants to present to you like you don't have to commit to anything but just literally just having an open mind and letting the universe kind of align naturally for you I think is really like important so I don't know if anyone needs to hear that you know just Uh kind of go with it until things make sense (laughs) I think a lot of people need to hear that well said actually (laughs) I guess this is probably be the most important question when it comes to your career on Twitch Mm -hmm. where do you want that future with Twitch to go Ah, I mean, it's tough because like, like the cheesy answer is like, well, I feel like I already have everything I need. Like, okay, you know, I'm I'm obviously not like a big big streamer, like, but like, you know, there, it it truly like moves me when I think about it, and it like humbles me when I think of like, oh, I can just set up my little. I have like a green screen in my living room. That's like. <laughs> You know, that's a benefit of just living alone. But like, you know, I just have a little very basic setup here in my living room. And that if I press this button on OBS to go (laughs) live, there are just people, just people all around the world, random places I've never been. There are just people who, when they see my name pop up, they're like, oh, I want to like, I want to say hello. Like, I want to tell this person about my day or I want to know how they're like, they, they are, they are genuinely like supportive and just I don't know there's a lot of love that I've I've felt in the last like year and I feel like that that is more than I expected because I was really just kind of talking to the void for a bit you know and I I didn't like I didn't have a problem with it but like but yeah and so it was just like oh there are just people who like are genuinely interested in just me just kind of like kind of talking to how like I talk to y'all like that's basically what my streams are like really I'm are, joking yeah. I'm having laughing yeah we're just having a good time like there's no like structure I'm obviously not like a speed runner or a professional player so I'm like we're laughing when I die and like <laughs> we're excited when I don't die and like you know <laughs> we're like most of these games except for like the Mario games I've, I'm playing for the first time so when there's like a plot twist like we're reacting together like so I'm having like these moments with people that I've really gotten to know and like some you know some of these streamers I've like I can truly say are my friends so I feel like that alone is way more than I ever thought would happen with this. So like, I obviously wouldn't, I mean, I think anyone who's already an affiliate, there is like this concept of becoming a Twitch partner, like in the back of your mind of like, oh, that would be pretty cool. And I mean, it's, but it's definitely more of a grind. Like I would say, you know, the, the, the distance between just starting to affiliate is definitely much shorter between affiliate and partner like Mm. you definitely I mean I guess some people you know can really like build that momentum but like it it takes some time like it that it's it's a big reach like it's an average viewership of 75 Mm. um, as opposed to affiliate the average viewership was three so you know you know that's a huge difference yeah it's a huge it's a huge you know you have to really build um towards that number and so I would love to see it honestly I would just I would like to a lot of my goals with Twitch come with like knowledge. Like <laughs> you ever just watch a stream? I'm like, damn, like they really did that. Like oh, yeah. they like, like, le- like I just love learning new stuff. So like, I never thought like I would get into like making my own alerts and having like a green screen and learning how to use it. And like all this stuff has happened like really gradually, but I love yeah. learning new stuff. So I want to learn how to do like pe- some, I don't have a stream deck. Some people have a stream deck. Mm-hmm. where yeah. you know you you have it and you press different buttons and different things happen like I'm going to save up for a stream deck so I can have different like transitions and and things like that those are really where I want to go with like just making the stream like more interactive and 
just fun. So that's kind of where yeah. I just hope to see it. And like, I, I've, I've thought about YouTube, just thought about, it. I have no plan for YouTube, but I would be interested to try in terms of like recording content and like, you know, just having um, a different outlet. Right. But I think Twitch is going really well for me. So I'm going to kind of put mo most of my focus there, but yeah, just like learning, learning how to add different things and that to me that's just like where the fun is like especially like <laughs> <laughs> adding different like things that can make people laugh and stuff and different alerts and stuff I, I find that to be fun so I recently started doing within this was like maybe within the last two weeks so people who are like my moderators or like you can have like VIPs in your chat that you just kind of have set aside all of the mods and VIPs are getting their own special alert for me to use when they arrive mm. in the chat Okay, and like the the reaction has been like so positive, and I'm like, oh, like people are like genuinely surprised, and like I try to like, I don't just give you like a random thing. Like I try to think of something that you like. Like I have like one of my moderators is a really one like big One Piece fan, so I nice. found like this um, One Piece theme that was like remixed pretty heavy, and it had like a really dope like drop and stuff. So I made this alert for his channel, and like he loved it, and I'm like. That's like it makes me happy that people genuinely like enjoy these things that I've been adding. So that's really yeah. where I want to go. Just make the stream more fun and play more games. Honestly, there's so, like hey, my backlog's pretty. So many. Honestly, yeah. like my backlog is so heavy, and then they yeah. keep talking about these uh, like more games come out that I want to play. So <laughs> <laughs> hard to keep up. It yeah. really is. Yeah. So just yeah, just have more fun. Yeah, just yeah. have more fun. So ready for one brutal question? Yeah. I gotta ask. Okay. Peanut butter on Oreos. I love no cow titty milk. Oh, <laughs> who told you that? Oh, that's fairly recent. Okay. My, my man does his research. He does his research. He does his research. Okay. So <laughs> we recently had a debate in my chat. Like, well, actually this, okay. The food discussions, are they, they happen a lot in the chat. And I think because people have fun talking about food, right? So... For a while, we would get into the whole pineapple on pizza thing for a while. Uh, and, you know, you know, I know that's, that's a hot topic. And I try not to, you know, make people feel bad. And so I, I you know, eventually I just got to the point where I was like, you know what? I really don't, I really don't care what kind of pizza topping person you are. I personally do not enjoy pineapple on my pizza. I have <laughs> tried different types of like Hawaiian style and I just, it, I get it, but also it's just not for me. Yeah. And so I made this joke of like, well, I won't judge you about like what kind of pizza topping you have on your pizza, but I will, I will judge you a little bit about, you know, how you consume milk. Because, <laughs> 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 so what, <laughs> what I was saying is just like, you know, if you were able to just drink milk, just pour it in a glass and just casually drink it. I don't know. I think you're a criminal. I think you're a criminal. <laughs> I, like without adding any kind of chocolate syrup, nothing to it. You're just able to pour milk right. into a glass and just drink it with like a regular meal. And <laughs> so, and that was like that now, you know, pineapple on pizza, that's divisive, but milk, that can be pretty divisive as well. So there were people who were definitely on board. Saying, I'm like, like a yeah, deal breaker. Like, no, <laughs> hell no, we do not drink milk just like <laughs> no like you know no one just drinks milk that's crazy and then there were other people like wait you don't like you don't drink milk. right <laughs> <This is> so <laughs> funny. So funny. like what do you mean you don't drink milk and so <laughs> one person was like wait so like when you eat oreos like do you not have a beverage and i'm like no i don't drink milk with cookies like if you know i'll just eat it like i'll put some peanut butter on you know on the oreo and i'll eat it dry like i'm not gonna or like if i drink anything it's gonna be water or maybe attacked. even like alcohol <laughs> you feel i feel so attacked Rum. right now because i drink milk with oreos and reese's and all that no like... i don't i don't drink milk. I don't... <laughs> and that's fine so but it's just like ah i just can't imagine like look, for example okay. if someone invites me into their home you know invites me over for dinner and then they, you know do, would you like something to drink and if they included milk as one of those options, I'm like, what, what, what is wrong with you? Why would you, like, you offer them, you know, water. I can offer you wine, a beer. Um, I have juice. I would never <laughs> offer someone milk. Like, that's true. I, I can understand that. that that's like, just, that'd be just weird. That would be weird. <laughs> basically, like, yeah. 
my joke was like, you know, if you are just drinking milk outside of the privacy of your own home, that's weird to me. That's weird. Like just <laughs> randomly, like if you go to a restaurant and order milk, the date's over. The date's over. <laughs> that's weird to me. I'm like, oh no. Oh wow. This person is just drinking milk like in that's public. Crazy. Like, like it's nothing. So it's just like, and like I cook with milk, obviously. Like if I have cereal, right. of course I'm gonna have cereal <laughs> with milk. Right. But like straight plain like and that's where i made cow titty milk just straight out <laughs> the, like oh, gallon so funny. into a because like you know because i also i prefer almond milk as well so drink so, almond milk yeah we yeah, do here. I'll, just, yeah, I'll drink almond milk you know mm-hmm. that's fine but like straight just regular plain as day in a gallon cow right. titty milk i would never just <laughs> pour it into a glass that's and be so like weird yeah chug it down <laughs> Ugh. Like just thinking of it makes me think, oh, that is so wrong. But funny. you know that that's those are my beliefs, and that's what I stand by. But <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> but yeah, All that's right. <laughs> good. Good on you. That's because that I don't think that was like even clipped. I think that was just like a part of a very long stream. But it took a lot. Like people, you know, we were on that for a while. <laughs> that was a. If you thought pineapple on pizza divided people, wait till you start talking about milk. Oh, wow, that's gonna be a good one for the uh, family here, conversations. Yeah. <laughs> People have different, you know, opinions on milk. So the, I, right. it, I don't know where the percentages were, but like, <laughs> I don't know. Milk, I feel like is, <laughs> I don't know. That's another topic. <laughs> gotcha. All right. That's so uh, the final question before we sign off here, folks. Uh, Tiff, what games are you looking forward to in the future? Like, what's one that you know you have to have on the stream that's coming out? Doesn't matter when. Just at some point. Okay, I don't know if y'all watched the 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 Sony like yeah. showcase. Of course, oh yeah. Forspoken looks so good. Yeah. It does. It really um, does. Square Enix is behind it, so you know it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> but like that is on the must play. Like I when I saw that on the sh- showcase, I was like, no, this is it. Like I don't know anything about this, mm-hmm. but I'm hooked. I'm invested. And when this comes out, that's when I'm gonna get my PS5. <laughs> probably. <laughs> well, uh... I'll probably. I'll pro- once I'm caught up on Yakuza and I'm I'm ready to play Lost Judgment, that's probably the more realistic time I'll get a PS5. I'm still on a PS4. Right. So Forspoken, 100 percent But you know what? I'm, I'm really hyped for um the Nintendo Direct. They uh what last week? Mm-hmm. I'm really hyped that they're bringing the 64 games into oh, the Nintendo okay. online. That yeah. is dope because I was just talking on stream what like two weeks ago that like I really wanted to play Banjo Kazooie again, right. mm. and I'm like dang, but I don't have an Xbox. Like you know, up until recently, that was really the only way you could play unless you you know were able to do an emulator or get your 64. Like I don't know how to stream from a 64, but <laughs> like, true. and so uh, the fact that they announced the 64 like Ocarina of Time, like there's so oh. many things that um, Diddy Kong Racing you'll be able to play on the. Nintendo Switch Online, so, that's and awesome. they're adding, like, Genesis games, I just think, so that's not really one game, but, like, Nintendo really did that, I wasn't right. expecting them to bring, I mean, eventually, but I wasn't expecting it anytime soon, like, this quickly, um, the 64 games, and then, other than that, I have not played the 2018 God of War yet, but when oh. I saw Ragnarok, <laughs> I said, oh, I need to get into it. So I have time, obviously, because I don't even think that's coming out until later 2022. <laughs> right. But that that showcase, like what they showed, um, like I guess that was like maybe like a, it wasn't that long ago. But when few they weeks. showed Ragnarok, yeah. yeah, a few weeks, roughly a few weeks as well. When I saw that, I said, yep. When I saw Thick Thor, Thick Thor, <laughs> and also Angraboda with, yeah. with oh, her yeah. hair, I said, she yes, amazing. Both, of, both of them looked so good. I said, yeah. all right, time to start. I'm going to start. So right. probably whenever I'm done with Xenoblade 2, I'll probably start God of War. Absolutely. Um, because I I need to get with it. That, that looks <laughs> So you know, I would say those are my three. So gotcha. Forspoken the Nintendo 64 games coming to the Switch, and then God of War. Gotcha. That what, sounds great. what are y'all hyped for? Oh, actually, you you nailed it, really. God of War, Ragnarok, mm-hmm. and uh, some of the 64 games that are coming to the Switch online, mm-hmm. and probably Final Fantasy 16. Forspoken, for sure, because I love everything Square Enix does, so yeah. Forspoken <laughs> is 16. But yeah, that's me, though. Man, uh, I think it's nine days away, Metroid Dread. I've been waiting oh. for this for a long time. So gotcha. really excited about that. And uh, yeah, that's 
man nintendo is just one of my favorites so metroid for sure gotcha all right well uh tip is there anything that you wanted to say before we end this particular episode you've been a great guest thank you so much for sharing awesome. everything this is so awesome. much fun yeah if you, like this i would great. come back anytime y'all are great i think Heck y'all yeah. are so cool so this was fun <laughs> i've never really done anything like this like a podcast like this i've done like you know i've talked with friends but not like not like a video kind of podcast so this was mm-hmm. fun gotcha all right well cruz uh you're gonna send us away as you always do my good sir Let's hit it, June Pride. Hey.